It will see greater strategic direction and leadership through the Academy's model, and it will demonstrate real local commitment to the children of Stoke. Now, I'm pleased to say, and I know it won't be universally celebrated, that yesterday I approved Stoke on Trent's Strategy for Change, Part 1 document, which outlines the local authorities' aspirations for change. And I look forward to the sequel, Part 2, in the future. And I'm keenly aware that the conclusion to close schools is a difficult decision and an unpopular one uh, within parts of the city and certainly with my honourable friends. And this is particularly acute in relation to Trentham High. Results have risen at Trentham over the past two years and I congratulate teachers and pupils on their progress and the head teacher Sue Chesterton in particular. But the local authority faces a significant challenge with the fall of pupil numbers in the south of the city. And in common with their, legal, their clear legal duties, they've taken the decision to reduce the number of schools in order to rationalise places. My honourable friend talked about projections of pupil numbers. In January 2008, uh, there were 13,113 pupils aged 11 to 16 in Stoke-on-Trent mainstream secondary schools. These schools have a net capacity of over 15,500. Over the next 10 years, the mainstream secondary school population in Stoke-on-Trent is projected to decline to 11,790 at its lowest point in 2013-14, but rising to 14,642 by January of 2019. I suspect, though, that the figures he has just quoted are, shall we say, a little disingenuous, given that the huge volumes of pupils who are leaving the city and have indeed been encouraged to leave the city because of the appalling behaviour by the council in recent years, which means that currently a school, for example, on just on the outskirts of Stoke-on-Trent has something like 50% of its pupils from Stoke-on-Trent. So the figures that he has just quoted actually relate to the pupils that currently are in the, in the city schools and assumes that the flow out of the city will continue. Uh, well, certainly I'm aware that there is a migration to neighbouring uh, authorities, uh, but uh, our um, delivery body, Partnership for Schools, have confirmed that the methodology used is sound and in line with national best practice. The Council has taken account of live birth data from the local primary care trust and the migration of pupils to secondary schools in uh, neighbouring authorities, amongst other factors. Uh, and the PCT figures are cumulatively greater than the ONS uh, ones, which he was quoting. Uh, such differences are quite normal and generally acknowledged by uh, the Office of National Statistics as due to local uh, knowledge. They're, they're, they're more up to date. So I've had, I've had to look at this, um, and we've had discussions um, in respect of some of the earlier ideas coming through from the Council, and um, that has um, meant that we've challenged some of those projections, but I'm now convinced that the projections um, are the right one uh, and that they therefore inform the, uh, the school organisation decisions that the council has had to make. Extremely generous. Um, he just, if I heard correctly, uh, said that the uh, primary care trust figures are more accurate because they're more up to date. Well, based on those figures, we should be looking at uh, 11 to 16 year olds uh, in the future in 10 year projection point, which is the point for BSF, of around 15,000. Um, now, is he saying, therefore, that the funding that perhaps will go to uh, the area outside of Stoke-on-Trent uh, will be uh, increased, so there will be extra funding for schools outside of Stoke-on-Trent because they're getting pupils that should be being educated in Stoke-on-Trent? Uh, is that what he's saying? Because he's obviously acknowledging that there will be 15,000 young people requiring schooling in 10 years' time at the age of 11. Well, uh, what I'm saying is that the methodology based on national best practice and in line with that best practice is saying that the high point will be in just over 10 years' time of 14,642 uh, pupils uh, across the city. And that's the, uh, the high point upon which the planning has had to be based. Um, now, the local authority feels that the new site at Blurton School, because it's more centrally placed, will allow more pupils in the south of the city to benefit from high-quality education provision. Statutory responsibility for school planning does lie with local authorities. It's right that it does. It would not be right for us to impose central solutions to uh, local problems. My judgment as a minister is not to judge school organisation matters. That in, is a matter in law in the Education Inspections Act of 2006, exclusively for the Council. My responsibility as the Minister for Schools 
is to ensure that the huge investment in Stoke schools that my honourable friend began by talking about will raise standards, particularly where standards are so patchy as they are in the city. And I'm satisfied that these plans pass that test. Now, BSF's success will, of course, not be measured in bricks and mortar, but in community improvement, pupil achievement, and brighter prospects for all. And clearly, the um, nature of the public debate in the city on building schools for the future means that there is quite a lot to be done in terms of community cohesion and bringing people together once decisions have been made. Uh, the Select Committee report on BSF said we must make sure that its impact is sustainable and that it continues to inspire long after the smell of fresh paint has faded. BSF is not a facelift to make schools look 10 years younger, but it has to be a permanent solution to make them last for decades. And for the pupils of Stoke-on-Trent, great buildings, strong leadership and renewed direction will see an impact that I'm confident will last long into their futures and build a strong platform for success now and for generations to come. I know it's been very difficult locally in reaching this point, but as I previously discussed with honourable friends, now that it's been necessary to make the decisions, I hope that we can now urge local people in the city and their representatives to move forward behind these plans um, rather than continue to oppose them and to continue to create that sort of division. I'll certainly give way. Um, would he not take the opportunity offered by the referendum we had last week, uh, which saw uh, the, the elected mayor who has pushed through these plans, and these are very much his uh, uh, creation, uh, hugely rejected? Um, and the plans themselves were rejected at uh, almost every single school where they were put to parents across the city, both my honourable friend's constituency, mine and my, right, my honourable friend, the member for Stoke North, rejected by parents in almost every school. And now the mayor who's pushed forward the plans has been rejected by the general population. Is this not of a moment uh, to give a little bit more time to look at this and see if a, 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 a plan that actually has the support of parents and teachers and governors uh, cannot yet be reshaped. It would not require a great deal of alteration, but it would be a, a very constructive move and be widely welcomed across the city. Mr. Jim Knight. Uh, obviously, I noted the uh, decision on the referendum on the principle of whether or not to proceed with the mayor, as I, as I understood it. Um, and, and obviously, um, people with more local knowledge will uh, make the judgment as to whether or not that was a, a referendum on the personal performance of the individual of the mayor who's in, in post or whether or not it was genuinely an answer to the question whether or not they want to proceed with the principle of a mayor. Um, but uh, as I've said, these decisions are decisions in terms of school organisation and what schools are where and how, uh, you know, what capacity they should be um, for in law for the local authority to make um, and uh, it's not inconceivable that local authority I, I guess would uh, on reflection on the referendum result you know, listen to what my honourable friend has said but um, I would just underscore my impatience that we should proceed um, I, w I wouldn't want anyone listening to this to take any comfort from any remarks that I've said in feeling that I want any more delay at all uh, I was really struck by my visit to the north of the city uh, and uh, if I have an opportunity to visit the south of the city then certainly I would do so um, but I have a responsibility to all of the pupils in the city and to allow them to get on with this investment and to gain from it and um, uh, if as ever if the council come forward with decisions around organisation that still continue to deliver standards then they will do so but as long as they're coming forward with um, plans that improve school standards, then I will approve them uh, and allow the city to move on. And I hope that everyone understands that and accepts my impatience for the children of the city. Thank you. Order, order. The question is that the sitting be now adjourned.
emergency room ident.